GearNetwork.com. The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. From wherever we decide studios, broadcasted live on iTunes, Spreaker, and worldwide, this is the Turnbuckle Talk Radio Podcast with your host, the producer, Pat G. The G stands for gangsta. And now kick back and get ready for the eargasms. morning. Happy Sunday, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, same sizes, colors, creeds, orientations, and everything in between. It's another edition of the TTRP. Pat G, Dan Fury here. Uh, lots of stuff going on. A lot of cowboy shit going cowboy on. Shit. Cowboy shit. Cowboy shit. Cowboy shit. Cowboy shit. Yes, yes. Uh, tons of cowboy shit going on. But we are here Sunday morning uh, to bring you all the news, notes, and opinions of the wrestling world from us, because that's what we do. Uh, Starting off, AEW full gear last night, and of course, AEW's uh, November pay-per-view, fall pay-per-view, what do you want to call it? It, It's their, their, like, Survivor Series, kind of, um, which we'll get into later. But... Kicking off the buy-in pre-show, uh, Thunder Rosa and Hikaru Shida versus Nyla Rose and Jamie Hayter. Uh, all these, mem- all four women are currently in the TBS uh, Eliminator Tournament. Um, of course, uh, Shida uh, Shida got the w- Shida got the win over. Uh, Thunder Rosa, which leads into their matchup this upcoming week on Dynamite. Yep. Uh, it was the match was pretty much all that it needed to be. It was a fun face pat faced uh fast paced tag match. You don't really need to do more than that. Sheeta Penny Rosa is the best possible outcome as it's coming up to a warm-up for the fans this upcoming week. Uh, kicking off the main show, uh, Darby Allen and MJF, of course, AEW, two of the young pillars of AEW in their uh, brief beginnings here, finally facing off against each other. And let's just talk about how good MJF is. Let's let's talk about MJF in particular and Darby Allen, uh, they're calling him one of the four pillars of AEW for a motherfucking reason. And in fact, if you haven't gone to pro wrestling tees.com and gotten your AEW four Hashtag pillar, not sponsored, not sponsored, but bought, okay, yeah. <laughs> not sponsored, but purchased. Um, and the reason why I say that is, ladies and gentlemen, th- they remind me a lot of. Uh, a very uh, 1999 2000s Triple H and we'll go with Mick Foley slash Hardy Boys, you yeah, know, kind of vibe. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Be- because it's hard to put pinpoint Darby Allen as like, oh, well, this would be his air. But the reason why I say that is, is that these two young gentlemen uh, over the last couple of years have really come into their own. MJF is the is the quintessential heel. Like, oh, like, don't get, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I love, I love me some Roman Reigns uh, in this current incarnation of of heel. But MJF came in as a heel, and yep. he's just gonna he's stay just, heel. He's just manufactured what a heel is from yep. the way he tweets about a city to the way he handles interviews to the way he fans. handles promos and fans. And how he handles this the ring psychology. Yes. Like last night, he straight out said, listen, I can beat Darby Allen with a headlock takeover. And granted, there was some nefarious tactics included, but he beat Darby Allen 
with the headlock takeover. He's calling his spots. And the best part about is it about it is, is that you and I have both commented over the last couple of years. MJF last year during the pandemic uh, with his work with Chris Jericho. Yep. I mean, it got national, their international attention, you know, because it was one of the biggest moments on TV last year. And let that sink in. WWE's programming was still going on. And one of the big moments of entertainment last year was a moment on a fledgling wrestling show featuring a legend and a kid that no one heard about beforehand. So like there's that. And then there's Darby Allen, who you and I both uh, said that at revolution 2020, his match with Sammy showed that those two are like the future of AEW. Oh, absolutely. The absolute future. And Darby came out with, with his, his classic Darby shit did his stuff. I mean, MJF did more to build Darby Allen in this match than anything that Darby has done previously, because there's something about working with another one of the young guys where you're both firing on all cylinders versus yeah. maybe Darby Allen working it all out with punk. Cause that was, that was Darby's chance to work with a legend. And I mean, yeah. it was his only blemish on his, on his record up until last night, phenomenal match. And honestly, I can, I can see either one of them in 2022 holding the AEW heavyweight championship more to come on that later. Oh, absolutely. Um, up next, you got the AEW tag team championship match, the Lucha Brothers versus FTR. Uh, Lucha Brothers do retain uh, this match. It this this is honestly what I feel it's setting up as. And listen, if AEW is if someone listening in AEW and you guys take this idea, kudos on you. But the way that this is setting up is, I think it's going to lead to a. Two out of three falls match, both sets of titles on the line. The Lucha Bros are going to end up getting the AAA t- tag titles back. FTR is going to end up winning the AEW tag team titles because the way that th- the way that AEW's tag division set up right now, it might be better for heels to have the title. The heel. Uh, especially FTR, considering what happened later in the night. See, one of the things that gets me is the knock on AEW's tag team division in that it's basically primarily the Bucks versus whoever they bring in, which I am willing... Which is not the case. Which is, I am about to call BS. Because and another match later on in the night really, really helped solidify this, too. And we'll, we'll get to, to yeah. Jurassic Express in a minute. If there are four pillars of, of the future right now, Lucha, FTR, I mean, Good Brothers, uh, Jurassic Express, the Young Bucks. I mean, uh, you, Team Taz. You can you can include them in this too. They have a very very deep roster of tag team wrestling, and one of the, one of the things that gets me is you it, with this forbidden door that is open. You have so many different possibilities as far as like promotion interpromotionals, like Triple A's titles, or like you you mentioned. You have a chance for all of these tag teams to walk around with gold, being like, "Yo, check it out!" And yeah. it's basically going to become a pissing match for the best tag team. And the last time, and I'm going to say this in all seriousness, that tag team wrestling was that good was 2000. Oh yeah, it took, absolutely. It took us 20 years yep. to get real tag team wrestling back on any promotion. And I know there's going to be people like, what about the Motor City Machine Guns? And what about this team and that team? And all of these are, are valid points. And I'm not going to sit here and fight you on, on, oh, what about this team? But I'm talking about in one company because you have to take into consideration th- there have been a lot of throw together tag teams. Uh, my mentor, Steve Cruz, this is one of his arguments about tag team wrestling because he's a tag team wrestling specialist is that there are no tag teams anymore. 
it's dudes they threw together that suddenly become a tag team. They come up with a name and then they have a title run or don't have a title run yeah. or, you know, it's a faction and two guys just happen to hold the belts within the faction. And for my money, the best thing to happen was the bucks go heel and start building up all these tag teams. And oh, they've, yeah. done it be- they've done it beautifully. And even to the point where we, we are continuing to build on this, on these future stars, even with these. And the reason why I'm getting to that is Jurassic express. Yeah. Like jungle boy and Luchasaurus are being basically maneuvered to, to show everyone like, not only are these guys also the future, but it's like, these guys are the future of your tag team division too. Currently yeah. FTR is currently the bucks are, you know, but you, you have to look towards the future. And, and I think you've got Jurassic express holding the tag team titles, either of them, any of them, any of the combination uh, within 2022. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you. Um, up next was the world title. Number one contender elimination tournament match, Miro versus Brian Danielson. And last night while I was at work, um, when I'm first, when uh, it was before I started work and that match was happening before I started work and somebody tweeted out and somebody, I can't remember who tweeted and they made the, they made the comparison to if, Danielson and Miro had the build that they've had with this match in WWE. Would it have would have ha- have had the same reception? I t- I'm I'm when I saw that I was kind of like, you know what? I'm 50 50 on it because you have that 50 because with the WWE fan fans, okay. You have a good chunk of, of WWE fans that are wrestling fans that will enjoy that kind, would enjoy that. But then you have that that other aspect of the sports entertainment thing, fact, factor where I don't think because of that, I don't think it would have been able to be built like how it's been built in AEW. So... <clears throat> Using two, st- two, two stars that were built in first, they were, you know, uh, they came to prominence in WWE. Yeah. You know, they were on the independence as, as the American dragon, uh, Brian Danielson and, and Miro. But the um, my thought going into this is. WWE is an entertainment brand that happens to feature professional wrestling. Yeah, where and they've, they've even said it. They're like, listen, we're an entertainment we're not pro brand. Wrestling. That, we're, we're an entertainment brand that happens to have a ring in the middle of it. Yes. And if you if you even someone has recently timed the amount of wrestling action on a Monday Night Raw, and I think of the three hours, there's something like barely 15 minutes of actual com- like content, like in ring content. Yeah. Um one yeah. of the I think one of the recent episodes, <laughs> somebody somebody sat there from eight PM until eleven, and they had the stopwatch, and it was they weren't counting the entrances; they were counting bell to bell. Yep. And yeah, it, it came it came in like a total of like twenty minutes or like fifteen, like fifteen to twenty minutes. And uh, an average two hour episode of of Dynamite. Is is something like over an hour of wrestling because oh, yeah. res- they are wrestling fans running a wrestling company that just happens to have a billionaire handing them money yep. and and Turner Turner uh, Productions willing to say okay whatever gets ratings and so far the ratings have been really good especially nowadays you and i have talked we're never going to get like 17 million views on on a paper on a on a television no, I, show again I, because of all the content that's out there see, but i you know or what, do you I, think or do you think it would take something special to bring that many fans in i think it would have to i think it's going to have to be something special now 
you, you know what? A lot of people are out there having their, a lot of people out there, social media, Twitter, TikTok, whatever, have had these like dream survive because with Survivor Series coming up, yeah, they had these dream like Survivor Series matchups, AEW versus WWE, and you've got like Kenny Omega ver uh, Omega versus uh, Nakamura or or Roman Reigns or, or uh, Punk versus Seth Rollins, uh, FTR versus the Usos. New Day versus uh, Jungle Express, like stuff like that. I think it would take something like that, something that no, if you're a wrestling fan, doesn't matter if you doesn't matter if you like WWE, AEW, ROH, Impact, New Japan, whatever. If you're a wrestling fan, and by some hook or by crook, that like dream scenario happens. Similar to how like they ran soup, like how AWA, WCCW, and NWA or Te- Memphis or whatever AWA. ran like, super clash. Yep. Yeah, they did super clash where you have like m- multiple companies coming together and yep. working out agreements to be like, okay, these are the matches that we're putting over. How can we put the uh, who can who's gonna go over where? It's not going to hurt anyone else. That if yeah. by if someone had a magic genie and went, hey, this is what I want on like first wish, and it happened. Yes, I could see you getting numbers like that. But with the age that we're in, 2021, with social media and all the dirt sheets and wrestling journalists so whether it be re- of the wrestling observer fightful uh who uh, wrestlinginc.com whoever and whoever okay it the difference from the difference from 20 25 years ago to now is social media i don't think yeah. they'll ever I don't think you'll ever see the numbers that we saw during the Monday Night Wars where a t- a program was getting 5.4, 6.2, 7.1. I don't Nine. think yeah, not some some like segments were getting like not like rock rock this is your life. Uh Bradshaw the, versus Farouk got yeah. uh what an 8? You I, know. Yeah, Bradshaw uh when when Tony Schiavone dropped the line, oh, that'll put Aston in the seat, and people flipped over to Monday Night Raw and and stayed there the all McFoley, night. Yeah. The McFoley McFoley title win got like a ten, it was like over a ten because of how many people actually switched over. I don't yep. think you'll ever see those numbers because of social media. So it's going to take something special, extremely special that wrestling fans never thought they would ever see. For you, for you to hit that number, and also it, it's we're we're okay. So you know we're we're going we're we're kind of you know like spurring off, and then we're we're bringing it back, ladies and gentlemen. Like yeah. these ideas are all gonna uh, go into the next nice. So Chris Jericho said, for him, it's not the ratings; it's the demographic. Yep. WWE is family entertainment that just happens to have some violent moments here and there. AEW has no problem going out there and just going full blur, like blood and guts. Ha ha. Um, but the thing that gets me is not only is Chris Jericho right where it's the demographic that matters, you know, really like who, who's watching, why are they watching and let's gear towards them for so long. Wrestling fans have, have wanted something that was a little less kiddish because here's, here's what it is. I mean, and I, Stephanie McMahon recently said that she compares the WWE product to to the MCU. <clears throat> the MCU caters to adults too. Oh, the absolutely. MCU caters to that demographic of adult viewers and yep. ch- kids. Okay, the first the first six movies of you know, yeah the first like six movies of the Marvel Cinematic Universe leading to Avengers one, they were, they were easily digestible and kids could watch them. And it was the basis of what would be those kids who go to the theaters later on to see Endgame. 
with WWE, it's almost like they, they catered to the kids and to the parents that are going to spend the money for their kids, but they forgot that demographic of 18 to 35 year old, 18 to 40, 18 to 50, who just want to see blood and guts and people beat the shit out of each other. Yeah. AEW fills that in, but AEW fills that in with stars that are actually likable and good and can, can go. And they have enough platforms to be able to do that. And, you know, as far as demo, as far as like numbers go, CM Punk's t-shirt, the night it came out, crashed the pro wrestling tees, not yep. a cheap plug website to where it took uh, what like five days to fix it so you could buy a fucking t-shirt yeah yeah it, it, took, it his, took them it took them a couple of days to fix the server yeah his his return segment was i think at two million views on youtube within the first like three hours not his promo his walk from the entrance yep. to the ring Yep. was 2 million views, one of the most watched views of wrestling. And then, like, of course, there has to be a spin to it. The inner, the Instagram, like, Brock Lesnar returning at SummerSlam got a million views in less than an hour. It's like, okay, you're comparing, you're, you're, you're trying. I see you're what you're trying doing. To compare, you're trying to compare apples to oranges. Like, I saw, I saw you did there. Yes, a million people watched a one-minute segment, but 2 million people sat there. And watch the seven minute entrance for a guy who just was trying to not cry. Yeah. Essentially. Because of the reaction he was getting. Yeah. So for for that being said, you know, and speaking of punk, I mean, his match last night with Eddie Kingston, the Eddie Kingston is showing you a, a side with with the uh editorial that he wrote and yep. also with just his promos lately that you know there have been a lot of guys on the independent circuit who had a fan basis who when they're given an opportunity if you are good enough and you push hard enough you can show everyone just how goddamn good you are and i mean eddie kingston was brought in by cody last year during his um tnt challenge that he was doing yep and you know eddie kingston eddie kingston blew up and I mean, even him and, and Mox were were having tag team title runs against the Young Bucks. And then this this match build up with CM Punk, man, and and his editorial about, you know, imposter syndrome and depression and anxiety. And it's like Eddie Kingston became in a lot of ways AEW's Mick Foley over the last couple couple months. In that Man, you let this guy open up and be him and not just a character. Yep. And and you have money. You you convinced me that Eddie Kingston could be AEW champion last night and be the face of the company based on his heart and determination and his promos as of recently. Yeah. And what it also did is it's it allowed CM Punk to actually put his hooks into something realistic and not not saying that like CM Punk coming back in charge and challenging Darby Allen awesome great the stuff that CM Punk has done since his return matches and everything a lot of people have said the CM Punk return has been kind of underwhelming but the this whole Eddie Kingston thing, it's allowed Punk to sink his teeth into something realistic. A and rivalry. Yeah, a a true rivalry. Yeah, a true rivalry. And what what other what a lot of other people want is they want to see that real with Punk. Punk was when Punk had his run in WWE, Punk was dealing with trying to deal with as much realism as possible he was in, in he, an unrealistic world yeah exactly where with AEW, you now can deal with that realistic ability in a realistic world so a lot of people are and like i said not knock on knock on wood whatever a lot of people are wondering if Punk and Colt Cabana are going to cross paths at some point. He did in his promo say that he had axes to grind. 
when yeah. he came back. Yeah. It, it's kind of inevitable. The Eddie Kingston one, Eddie, Eddie going out there and referring to himself as punk's karma. Yep. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Wow. Um, not to get loud in the microphone, but woo. God damn, because in in the fanfare of the return of the prodigal son being CM Punk and and the immense response he had in Chicago, there are those people that still in the are like punk is a fucking asshole. Yeah. Not not to swear too much on the podcast because I don't want John to be like, oh my God, who keeps giving <laughs> Dan a microphone? But, <laughs> Sorry, John, but uh, you look at it and you're like, you seem to forget that even in WWE productions, they mentioned that if Punk didn't want to do business, Punk didn't do business. Yeah. If Punk yeah. wanted to tear up a promo in front of you, Punk tore up a promo. It, it was not just that. And yeah. I'm not, he, I have, he, he has said it himself in like interviews and everything. Like there's been interview segments that I've seen like via TikTok and YouTube where he's like, he's talking about like the Royal Rumble leading to the rock and yeah. somebody walking up there. He's here's your promo. Here's your promo that you're, and he's like, and he's like, no, he ripped it, he ripped it up right in front of someone. And he's like, you can't tell me what I'm going to say until I get out there and say, and and whatnot where oh. where with the rock it was yes okay come on as as much as as much as people as much as it was made light where obviously everybody saw the writing on rock's hand i don't think to me i've gone back to that and i'm like i don't think it was his like legit promo i think it was like three, maybe four bullet points, wrote just little small things for him to just remember and remember. And you have to think, and and let's get, let's get one thing clear. Okay. Promos are an art and promos are a muscle. And if you don't use that muscle, yeah, it sometimes can come off a little murky. It happened to Hulk Hogan, the greatest of all time in WWE, arguably. Messed up a promo at WrestleMania 30, ladies and gentlemen. Horribly, awesomely horrible. Horribly. Okay. Horribly. Uh, yeah. You called it the wrong place at a mania. But anyway, um, you look at it and it's like punk, the interviews out there. Yeah. He difficult to work with. And Eddie Kingston, having been one of those people where he was, quote, difficult to work with. Yep was the perfect plug-in, especially right now. And also it it elevates Eddie Kingston to give us a rivalry where Eddie Kingston's character can can flourish. We know he can get nasty. We know he can get dirty. And we know now he can be brutally honest with his emotions. And to me, reading Eddie, and if you haven't, ladies and gentlemen, it is available online. Eddie Kingston's, I, I'm going to call it a manifesto where he basically yeah. goes over, you know, like his, his emotions, which is something that I think we've talked about off air and on air, you know, like men feel emotions, deal with it. Men feel things. And yeah. he feels things. He feels, he feels a lot. And it, it was a very beautifully written piece. So, so check that out. Oh yeah, it absolutely was. It was, it was uh, posted on the players tribune site. Um, the title is Eddie Kingston got no business effing being here. And he talks about everything. He talks about the mental health and, and everything of people giving him that, like you, you're just another guy and you don't need to be here. And, and it it's like you said, it's his manifesto and it's just this really not good written article. And I'm sure, I'm sure the players tribune editors and stuff, they kind of, they went over it and kind of like gave them critiques or made little adjustments or whatever to make, make it more pop make it pop a little bit more, but you could feel that emotion. And 
if you go back to that promo from Rampage between Kingston and Punk, and it's a good 15 minutes, and you have them go back and forth, you can see the realism. You can see the emotion between those two, and that's what happened in that match last night. And And yes, that's exactly what happened in that that match last night. Um, And as much as people would have loved to see Kingston get the win last night, the 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 only they only had one way to go, and that was Punk, and that was Punk getting the win because right now Punk's being built as one of the primary big stars of the company, very similar to, and I know the people people all day they will constantly try to make comparisons between AEW to WCW and Impact and yep. everything. Punk right now is in that same light that Hogan and Savage were in where I'll, I'll give him the, I'll give him uh, and this is the ultimate compliment. He is Randy Savage in oh, this yeah. scenario. And the yeah. reason why I say he's Randy Savage is is that Hulk Hogan came in and in his first match Yep. WCW at a pay per view and won the title. Beat Ric Flair. Okay, yep. mind you, it was the most purchased pay per view in WCW history to that moment because everyone wanted to see Hulk, you know. And also, he did hype. He also hyped the pay per view while leaving the steroid trial. Let's just let's talk about the balls of Hulk on that one. Yeah, but, and, and it was the biggest bash of the beach pay per view that WCW had ever seen. Yeah. And they literally did. They literally did what WWF tried to do, tried to do, but couldn't, but decided against it for WrestleMania eight. Yeah. And, you know, the thing with with Randy Savage was I look at what he did with like DDP and some of his other work with bigger stars. Randy Savage maybe didn't work with a lot of the talent that we would have wanted him to work with, you know, like. You know, I'm sure you know, your Jericho's, your Mysterio's, yeah. your Guerrero's, your Benoit's. Uh, but actually, no, he he kind of did work with the Benoit's because of of the rivalry with the Four Horsemen. So, like, he did get an opportunity to work. He with didn't really, a, I, but catapulting guys. Yeah, Cat, he, he was, never. The thing, the thing with Savage is, and rest in peace. Um, the thing with Savage is. I've watched enough stuff. Like I watched the a, I watched the A and E thing on him, and I watched the stuff like interviews with Lonnie Papo and everything. Savage, like honestly, even if you go back to the WWF days when he was there, he was trying to elevate guys. Yes, um, he was always trying to elevate someone. And yes, did he get the main event? He got the main event run with Hogan with the title because Hogan was off doing movies or whatever, and he had the big blow. He had the big he had the big blow off with Hogan at WrestleMania five. The mega powers explode and whatnot. And but you had you had he elevated Warrior. He oh elevated, my god, Warrior's best match. Yeah, period. He elevated Warrior. He ele- he tried to ele- he tried to ha- like even before he left he he had the the little nonsensical feud with Repo Man oh, he, over the hack he did a lot of business he made Ric Flair when Ric yep. Flair's run I mean even though we knew Ric Flair okay I, let me rephrase that he made Ric Flair relevant to WWF fans who only knew the WWF product. Got to got to correct myself. He didn't yeah. make Ric Flair, but he he elevated Rick's. He he work. elevated Rick's stature within the WWF crowd. Thank you, fan base, uh, because the fan base was mostly based new Northeast. Yep, uh, it was Undertaker. very rare that they went south. Exactly, the Undertaker. Uh, Undertaker turned baby. People forget Undertaker turned babyface, saving Randy Savage. Yep. Okay. Uh, Randy Savage did work with a lot of guys. And I think Punk is on that same vein. And Eddie Kingston just happens to be this one guy that we could see a lot of a lot of good shit from in yeah. the future. And and you know. and then on top of it, while we're talking to CM Punk, you have the likes of Chris Jericho. 
Now, of course, the inner circle, they they had the the street America's fight. top team. Well, America's top team. Yep. I'm gonna say this. Please, for the love of God, be done with it. Because it's the promos. I will say this: the promos have been decent, mm-hmm. have been good. Hey, uh, I'm gonna tell you now: if AEW does inside does not sign Paige Van Zant, WWE is going to. Because she's got. She's got a little bit of an it factor to her. She, well, I mean, I know in an interview she said she's kind of done with this shit, but that again, everyone is done with it until their bank account gets some uh, much needed zeros oh, in it. And I'm yeah, not exactly. talking about motherfucking negative zeros. Yeah, uh, they exactly. See money. Exactly. Yeah, I think coffee. Um, but I will say that. First off, she's got an it factor. Did you ever think in 2021 someone was going to mention an OnlyFans account on on nope. wrestling? No. Oh my god, man! D- dudes are getting fired over Twitch, and Jericho's throwing OnlyFans up at people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, Junior DeSantos is one of the best mixed martial artists uh, of all time. Yeah. Uh, Jorge Masvidal, one of the best mixed martial artists of all of the modern generation. I mean, let's be honest. He he's well recognizable and you know, he can go uh, Scorpio sky, uh, even page. Those guys got a good rub from them. Oh yeah. To me, pop of the night is Baron Von Raschke in no, Minneapolis. With the iron claw. Oh no, my God. With the iron mean, claw. Pop, yeah, especially, pop. especially with them being in Minneapolis. Yeah. I mean, it's, and here's the thing about AEW fans. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a give them the, uh, a little bit of elevation here. Don't, don't fire me. AEW fans are that hardcore base that appreciate, you know, they don't just bring a legend out to have a moment and then, okay, bye. Go back. It's not an, it's not a backstage segment. Okay. I mean, we, we saw Canadian destroyers from the rock and roll express this year. Uh, yep. Sting, Sting and, and Christian Cage and Jake the Snake Roberts, the uh, uh, Tully Blanchard, Double uh, A Arnand. Double A had one of the best promos of all year in 2021. Yeah, like they're they're, not- they're it, it's it's so much the and like Tony Khan being a wrestling fan like he is, and then the AEW f- fans being the wrestling fans that they are. They're paying, they're knowledgeable and paying tribute to the guys that have paved the road before. Yeah. And Jerick, and and I will say that I said this before and I'll say it again. Jericho has been playing that Hulk Hogan role in AEW, but he's doing it differently because whereas Hogan could have. Hogan could have easily given the rub to the younger guys and the younger generation to help build them up. That's not what Hogan did. Jericho's doing that. No. Jericho, if you look at the, the four pillars of W uh, uh, AEW, okay, he has worked with Orange Cassidy. Yep. He's worked with MJF. Yep. Uh, Sammy, recruited Sammy. Yep. So you got Sammy, and Sammy has been under the the learning tree of Jericho. And he and he's had matches with. He's had he's had interactions with Omega. Darby. Yeah, an Omega and Hangman Page and, Hangman and, and multiple and multiple others. Like yep. he's had interactions with people. So for to me, um. The thought that goes through my head when it comes to Chris Jericho is I will I will dare say Chris Jericho probably never forgot when Hogan was in the backstage area and said, look, you were you were right on this one. Like you were doing business. You were trying to make something out of nothing and you were correct. And it's like that has always been Jericho's thing is it has to make sense for business. And if the business is you're getting squashed in 35 seconds but it's going to be the most glorious squash of all time, then you do it. Uh, whether or not someone wants to go along with those plans or not. Jericho's not afraid to look dumb. Jericho's no. not afraid to look vulnerable. And more importantly than that, Jericho's not afraid to go outside of that box in order to tell a cool story. And he did it with America's top team. I think it's time 
that if you're going to sign any of, of the, the MMA guys from that, then, then do it. If, if maybe yeah. junior DeSantos decides this is the route I'm going to go and they start working with him and building yep. him fine, go for that route. If Paige wants to sign, go for that route. You know, it's a pay. Yeah. You know, let's be honest. Mixed and, martial arts is very tough to do. So is professional wrestling. She's got both under her resume. Yep. Um, and the thing is, is the thing is, is, MMA is is super big, okay? Everybody, yes, it is. It's got a huge fan base. Now, now WWE in the past they had Ken Shamrock, you had Dan Severin, and they brought in Ronda Rousey. They had they King they've Velasquez, made over, King yeah, they've made overtures around to, for a, a cup of coffee. Yeah, they've made overtures towards McGregor. Yep, and, and it's just the. It's a matter of you you see you've seen what Shayna Baszler has done. Yep. And of course we can't forget, you know, the granddaddy of them all, Brock. Yeah, I mean exactly. Let, let's be honest. He was a huge star, went away, became a bigger star, came, came back, back, goes back there, comes back, goes away, comes back, comes back with an Amish beard and a yep. ponytail. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like I look at the way that they that Mixed martial combat sports, mixed martial arts and professional wrestling. It's funny because like, prof, I think mixed martial arts fans hate the comparison to professional wrestling, even though mixed martial artists will completely mark out for professional wrestlers. Like, you know, there's a reason. Look at the, look at the crowd reaction with the rock triple H Stephanie segment at mania with Ronda Rousey. Yeah. Uh, let's look at the fact that, uh, you know, Colby Covington came out to Kurt Angle's theme song the other night, and the fans actually were chanting, You, you suck. suck. Yeah. Along with, it's like, like there, like this is the thing is there's crossover, there's a lot of crossover there. Like Colby Covington is the closest thing to a professional wrestling heel underneath Conor McGregor that yep. you have in mixed martial arts. I mean, let's be honest, and I'm uh, people send me your hate mail, I get enough of it. Mixed martial arts, the original UFCs were awesome. Okay. The, they were. But then you started bringing character into it. The Iceman, Chuck Liddell, yep. you know, Tito Ortiz became a character. And, you know, then, you know, that was like 2004, 2005, you know, Forrest yeah. Griffin when he was uh, on the Ultimate Fire. Then, of course, you bring in arguably one of the biggest wrestling stars up to that point. Uh, in recent time, Brock Lesnar, who people forget was a legitimate division, you know, uh, division A. NCAA, NCAA division I one wrestler. Mean, thank you. Uh, not just a wrestler, like undefeated. Like, the man, yeah. eight people alive. Like, people forgot that this was a, a, a monster. He goes out there and beats the natural Randy Couture yep. for the UFC heavyweight championship. And then, had, and then had a hell of a matches with Frank Muir. I mean, at UFC 100, bloodying him up, you know, like. Yeah. He, you need characters to hate. And in fact, if you want to look at it, professional wrestling has done that with a lot of athletes like there and just in general, like culturally, there's no reason why I should be listening to Ice Cube in 2001 talking about flying off the top like Superfly Jimmy Snuka. Jesus Christ, that hasn't happened in decades. And they're still talking about it to this day. Yep. So, like, that's the crossover appeal, even in, in pop culture. It, to me, it, it almost is like, OK, you've you've done the storyline revolution in February is going to be the next big pay-per-view. Who are you going to build towards now? Per, I, you know, I honestly would like to see uh, Jericho go back to working with like a younger talent. There's enough of them. And, yeah. you and, know, and speaking of talent. That forbidden door, man. Oh, uh, uh, are we going to talk about the signing? The signing, yeah. Jay, Jay Lethal, uh, Jay Lethal was given his release from ROH. Uh, his contract it was go was up until the December thirty first, but he asked for his release. ROH granted it, uh, so he will not be at Final Battle. But he is now signed officially to AEW and will be making his debut this Wednesday. Versus Sammy Guevara for the TN for the TNT Championship. Great 
great, great signing for AEW. Yet, a, And here's one of those knocks that people are going to say, oh, my God, they're just signing everybody. It's like, you know what? The situation with Ring of Honor, it's a lot different than the situation that goes on with WWE with budget cuts. So I would I think that this is going to be one of of many signings. Oh, yeah. I, I, I truly think that a, you're going to see a handful of talent from ROH show up at show up in ROH or, or from ROH show up in AEW. They may not. You may not be they may not be signed, but they're they're going to show up. Um, you know, I, I have two guys that I would like to see show up uh, in AEW. Uh, I'm partial to Dalton Castle, the Peacock. You know, yep. himself showing up. I would like to see the cock on uh, AEW television. And also, you know, I would like to see someone come back very healed, very evil. Uh, you know, the man himself, the evil one, Dan Housen. I mean, I would love to oh. see him oh. because he's such a character. Once he once he recovers from his leg surgery and everything, I, I could see Dan Housen. Because he's very evil. You oh, know, very absolutely. nice, very nice, very evil. But I mean, that's a character in and of itself. When the Rock is retweeting your shit, yeah. You also, know, I, also, slight spoiler, slight spoiler. Fingers crossed, hoping I get a response. Oh, that would be very nice, very evil, very nice, very evil. Yeah, I did. I did contact. I did contact the Dan Housen team because if you can, if we get that, I want to borrow that for the Necrocasticon because my bolt, my buddy Walt Ball has wanted to have a conversation with that man, a very nice, very evil conversation. And uh, listen, listen, I will, I will say this now. And I, I, if Walt, if Walt listens to the show, which I'm sure he does, because wrestling fan, if, if by some chance Danhausen decides to agree to come on, I will make sure Walt Ball is part of the conversation. Good, good. Because Walt Ball will, ne- Walt, you heard it. You heard it. I told you throw it out in the universe and we'll get it somehow. Pat G, the G stands for gangster and go getter. Go get her. Yeah. 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 Gangster go getter. Triple G. Yeah. All right. So, um, but <laughs> of course, of course, Jay, and the thing is with Jay Lethal, Jay Lethal gives you another top star, like another builder. Yeah. Another builder and everything. And then, of course, uh, we finish off the um daniel or brian danielson beat miro of course uh jungle express and christian cage won the street fight uh inner circle now this now before we get to the main event okay so this is where this is my little bone to pick with AEW. all right i'm I'm gonna sit back and enjoy this one my little bone to pick so the match order all right, because we were taught we were talking Miro, Miro and Miro and Danielson. Okay, after Miro and Danielson was the Super Click versus Christian Cage and Jurassic Express. Mm-hmm. Now to end the match, to end the match, um, Jungle Jungle Boy essentially gave the concerto to Matt Jackson. Okay. In wrestling lore, the concerto is a your night is done. No, you are done. You are not seen again for that night. Okay. And I know people complained about the whole uh, the whole Adam Cole thing, uh, Christian giving Adam Cole the concerto, and then Adam Cole wrestling two days later. Finger quotes two days later on Rampage. Okay. But still, two days later. Okay. So you figure Matt Jackson takes the concerto. Okay. You have the Malachi Black, Andrade, Andrade, Cody, Pac match. You have the women's title match, Britt Baker retaining. You have the CM Punk Eddie Kingston match with Punk's one and the American top team in a circle. Okay. Getting to the main event. Kenny Kenny Omega defending the championship against Hangman Adam Page. At the end of the match, the Young Bucks come out. Nick and Matt Jackson. 
why? What I I understand that the promo that was done on Rampage between the Young Bucks and and Hang Hangman and Page Page apologized. You guys screwed me out of the title. I screwed you out of the tag titles, so on and so forth. That's fine, fine and dandy. But one of the Young Bucks literally got concertoed on the entranceway and was out back out at ringside an hour or so later, showing no effects. So what make it sa- make sense. Yeah, like th- that's that's always been one of the critiques of um that style of I you know like I like I get okay, like I get it. It's 2021, kayfabe is that whatever, okay. We Undertaker's on Twitter. Yeah, Undertaker's on Twitter. Uh Many people have twitches. They have OnlyFans. Whatever. Okay. Hell, OnlyFans was made. Was Chris Jericho said OnlyFans on, on a on a TV show? But in wrestling lore, in wrestling sense, like it's the thing of I, I get why people were slightly complaining about the Adam Cole thing when at, when Christian gave Adam Cole the concerto and Cole's wrestling technically two days later. Fine. But two days later, this is an hour or so later after this man gets concertoed by Jungle Boy on the entranceway. And he's out there just like in street clothes, not like no prop, like nothing's wrong. I think the, well, that goes to the problem of like, all right. So to, to bring up the Adam Page thing, by the way, I, I'm, I'm not arguing any of this shit with you. Um. Because there has to be like a believability factor. Okay. Adam Cole getting concertoed two days before a pay per view. He should have come out and been groggy. Like he could have sold that shit. Well, he wrestled on Rampage. That's what people were complaining about. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But it happens. Yeah. But like, that's the thing is that if you go back in, yeah, there was still that that, like suspension of disbelief because, like I said, said, everybody knows they take Rampage after Dynamite. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. technically, it technically in wrestling logic, it was two days later. Yeah. Well, I mean, they did the same thing on SmackDown. I mean, you, you yeah. dudes would get put through tables by the Dudleys on uh, Monday, yeah. and then Thursday they're out yeah, there. They're, they're perfectly fine. Yeah, they're perfectly fine. It, it's just suspension and disbelief. I get it, but it's just like it needs to be real enough to you to like an hour later isn't long enough. Yeah. Like an hour, like an hour, 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 hour and a half ish, whatever. Um, it, it, it did. It was just like I understood why they were out there because it was playing off of the promo that they had backstage at Rampage, where Paige apologized for being an asshole. You screwed me. I screwed you. We're even, but you touch me and I will ruin you. It was just okay. You didn't. Like, I understand why the Young Bucks were out there, but there was completely no believability to it because one of them just got their head smashed on the entranceway an hour or so before. Yeah. It, I think it comes down to you're trying to put so much out there yeah. that those details can get lost. And I mean, dude, I'm not going to lie. Even I did shit like that. So it's like... You're you're trying to tell as great a story as possible. Maybe they should have done the whole pullback. Um, which 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 on the flip side, and I will, and I'll 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 double I'll doubles advocate my own point or whatever. And like I said, they could have done the pullback. I understand why they didn't because you needed both the young bucks to be out there to give that will they or won't they fit type will they or won't they screw the try to get involved and yeah. what's curious is of course hangman adam page hits the hit hits the one wing angel hits two buckshot lariats gets the one two three get, gets the one two three wins the wins the aw championship but what adds to it is and this is what I get when I saw the video video of it or whatever 
on Twitter, TikTok, whatever it was, the 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 nod that he had with Matt Jackson, like before he hit the second one, like that little nod. It was like, okay, it gave it gave you. I'm like, all right, I'm not mad at it because it's planting seeds now. In that, what's going to happen with the elite? Because now no one has championships, mm-hmm. but there was that little bit of nod there because it, for so many times before the Bucks have saved Omega's ass. Now they don't, but there's that little nod. So, like, what what's up with that? Yeah. It's it's dissension within the ranks. And not only that, but it's like, you know, I I'm going to uh to go out here and say that like AEW, I think at times gets a bad rep for storytelling. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, they, they it, do. it does. They do. Uh you know, it's it's spots, it's it's bringing in old people, it's though it's WCW 2.0. <clears throat> But let's not gloss over the fact that last night was the payday to a two and a half year story. Oh, absolutely. Last night was uh, as a wrestling fan. I'm going to say this across all brands, all companies, wrestling fan. Very rarely anymore do they do a two year story like this because fans are so ADHD. Take offense to it if you want. You are. It's ooh, bright lights, shiny things, go, 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 yep. go. Da, 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 da. That sometimes the story can get lost in in stuff. Case in point is the curious case of of Hangman Adam Page, who did not win the AEW title against Chris Jericho. Nope. Which started his uh tag journey. team run. Yep. His journey where he and Omega ended up right. winning the tag team titles, but there was the, Oh, well, you're just a drunk. You can't handle the fact that you can't handle pressure. Yeah. Like him essentially was, leaving the elite and it, going out on his own. And then it, finding his, his, his journey, his, his journey, like him, him having a, a soft relationship with the dark order. Well, I mean, they were the friends that, yep. They were the friends that came in after where he didn't know what he was doing. Yeah. And they looked at him like, dude, you're the man. Like, we see it. Why can't you? Yep. And it's those odd comments from people like you think you're one thing. And then someone comes in and is like, no, you you're bigger than this. Like you you represent everyone in the company, not just five guys at the top who signed the checks. So then that started his journey into being what is now AEW heavyweight champion. And I mean, it was a two year story intricately done and it was subtle at times. And for me, the payoff last night couldn't have been better. Could not have been better. I honestly, I, it could have not been better. Plus had they decided to not have page win the title. I don't, I, it would have been very hard for me to see Paige getting that shot again. And the the one thing I can say is <clears throat> there is enough of a well of talent that oh, yeah. Adam, Adam Page can learn yep. from right now because he's going to go to school with Brian Danielson. Like, oh, absolutely. That is going to be one of the best matches in yep. AEW so far. And it's going to be because he needs get guys like Brian Danielson, and I'm not taking anything and, away and, from. And also on the side fact, Danielson is holy mother of God. The, the the shape that that man is in, and the fact that he has been telling such good goddamn stories that, that it started. Let's give credit where credit is due. Brian Danielson is wrestler of the year. Oh. Absolutely. Okay. And the reason I say that is he started off the year in WWE having a phenomenal storyline with Roman Reigns. Yep. Probably the, if anything, Reigns' run with the title was okay. Then he met Daniel Bryan. Yep. Daniel Bryan took it from 
hey, you're you're this to this. You're a, yeah, in a heart. You're, you're you're slow burn. You're kind of slow cooking right now. Let's turn up the heat. Yeah, and Daniel Bryan was so loved, and then you added the other factor of Edge, who yep. went from the number one spot in the Rumble to the end, who is equally as loved for a different reason. Headlining main of you know men eventing WrestleMania night two this year. And Daniel Bryan and Edge went out there and made Roman Reigns the number one heel in wrestling. They did. And then to add on to that, gives Roman Reigns one more victory on his way out the door. Yep. Then walks into AEW and is having matches with Suzuki. He's having these Miro. Uh, freak. all of these matches that Daniel Bryan has had so far have been just God damn son. Yeah. And like I said, he's, he's in phenomenal shape and, and everything. And what's, what's, what's great is he's separating himself from the WWE run that he had. Yes, he is. He is truly separating himself. Yes, it, it's almost to the same set. Like it's almost in the same sense of Adam Cole. Okay. Okay. Danielson was a very huge name on the independents. Got signed to WWE. Was in WWE for X amount of years. Made money got pushed, had, became a bigger star, a bigger name, left, and now he's reestablishing himself again with that, with all that popularity he, he had built up in WWE. Adam Cole, same thing. Adam Cole, name on the independence, went to WWE, got put in NXT, became a big name, part of a faction, Face, face of a brand contract la, contract role now he's out he's out and he's doing and now because of that where he's made money and drawn people in he's now a bigger name yeah and the thing is is that's the thing that you have to look at because i it all these comparisons aw to impact aw to wcw okay you really look at you want to sit down and cut and try to compare apples to oranges. Fine, be my, be my guest. Wrestling TikTok, wrestling YouTube, whatever, whatever. Okay, not half of y'all have never spent one day in a ring, so you don't know you don't know how to bump anyway. Um, but that's here nor there. WCW back in nineteen ninety two, back in nineteen ninety one, and you. you and when it, I, I when it became I, branded as WCW. Yeah. When it became branded as WCW from NWA and everything, when it got branded, you, you had your, you had your stalwarts at, you had your NWA stalwarts, the Ric Flair's, the Dusty Rhodes, Sting, the Four Horsemen, Lex Luger, stuff like that. Okay. Ron Simmons, Bader. Then, then, the steroids trials happened. Hulk Hogan, Vince McMahon wants to start a youth movement, so to speak. Okay. Wants to, wants to start, doesn't feel like Hogan can, Hogan doesn't need to be a part of it. Hogan wants, Hogan wants to go do movies, TV, whatever. Okay. But Hogan knows he's got value. So he, he still wants to contribute. He signs with WCW. Shortly after that, you got Mean Gene, you got Bobby Heenan, uh, John Tenta, Big Boss Man, a lot of that's, a lot of the guys, the Eddie, uh, Bar- uh, Brutus the Barber Beefcake is the Booty Man, so on and so forth. You got a lot of the guys that Hogan, that were Hogan's buddies and running mates during the eighties, eighties in WWF. Now you have them in WCW mixed with that talent or whatever. And then, and I'm going to say this is Bish, Bischoff 
in WCW, when WCW started taking off, Hogan helped them. Then when Bischoff changed the, got Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, he had the luchadors with the cruiserweight division. He had a, he had a, he had an okay women's division for a hot minute. Mm-hmm. Everything. It was different because they were dealing in realism. Yeah. WWF had changed it, changed it up. They dealt in realism. Okay. Impact. But you had all these guys that were so well known from WWF now in WCW. You look at the comparison to Impact. Okay, you had you had the Impact, and Jeff Jarrett had an interview, and he's like, "Yes, we brought in former WWF WWE guys, Christian Cage, Kurt Angle." staying what whatever whatever may be the case you brought in these like legend guys that had made their name out in the other company okay or elsewhere wrestling but the thing is is where impact impact had that younger base talent because you had aj styles you had christopher daniels you had samoa jones yeah and i guess that's the interesting part about where where we're going or where you've gone with this if you don't mind me asking you a little bit question people seem to like for like put this timestamp on impact wrestling right yep. where it almost seems like to the you know january 1st 2006 and after was what they considered impact wrestling yeah they're- okay basically the, the basically christian cage being there sting showing up Kurt Angle showing up, Samoa Joe being champion. There was this like time frame where everyone puts it there. You have to go back to 2001, 2002 when Impact started after Vince McMahon bought the world. Jeff Jarrett was running TNA wrestling, you know, like yeah. the Jarretts were running it. I would, I would dare go back to those first two and a half years. If you want to do a comparative study, you have one that's literally being run in front of you in real time. And you can go back to the previous data of what the first two years of impact wrestling, TNT wrestling was from 2001, 2002 until 2003, 2000. Yeah. Yeah. You can look at that time frame. TNA, total nonstop action. Yeah, let's go TNA. 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 They debuted when? uh, They debuted early in July of... uh, July of... 2002. um, Okay. Because the concept... The concept was discussed while Jeff Jarrett was on a fishing trip with Bob Ryder and Jerry Jarrett. Um, Ryder suggested a company not relying on television, but rather one sh- going straight to pay per view. Hence, why they had the weekly Wednesday night pay per views for TNA. Okay. And they were like two hours long. Yep. I think it was like tw- 15, 20 bucks. Okay. Er- er- every Wednesday night. So um, you can take those. And that was the first. And that went, I think that went from like sometime in 02 to uh, September of 04. And then okay. what TNA, what a lot of people believe t- is TNA is that is the five year run from 04 to 09, because that's when you saw um, the impact zone and you had. Them, I they were on TV. They were on TV. They were they were on TV with Fox Sports. Yep. And then uh, that's when that's when you had the that and what it was is September two September eleventh two thousand five is the Unbreakable pay per view with the triple threat between Daniels styles and samoa joe for the x division championship okay and then later that year they got the deal with spike and then that's when it that's when you saw kevin nash rhino christian cage sting steiner angle booker t and mick foley the which was like the and that was the rise of styles and abyss and that's when it was the I think like the booking, the booking writing team was like Jeff Jarrett, Scott Demore, 
and one other per and like one other person. Okay, so let's take the time frame where they were having the wen- the weekly Wednesday pay per views from two thousand and two until September of two thousand and four. Yeah, that is their that is in my mind the the important time because they had guys like Raven showing up. They had other talents showing up at that time. Like CM Punk, I think had a match on TNA. Uh, yeah, in- CM Punk was involved because him and uh, Raven. He- him and Shannon Moore, I believe. Okay, it sounds about right. Okay. Shannon, it was Shannon. I think it was Shannon Moore. I know they they were in a they were in a they were in like a faction with Raven. Okay, so here's my thought. You got to go back and compare those years to then. Okay, because I know what everyone is thinking. Oh, it's the 2009, or was it 2010? 2010 January. is when. Hogan it came when in with Hogan, Bischoff. Eric Bischoff, and Dixie Carter were like in charge. Okay, so you need to <coughs> you need to. People seem to think that that's the TNA or the impact that they want to talk about. It's like, nah, go back to the original, okay? Because out of that came uh, a an era between 2004 until 2008 that when Pat G was just describing it was pretty damn good television. I mean, you had AJ Styles going into his own. You had Samoa Joe arriving shortly after the series of matches in Ring of Honor against the <laughs> You had the, the Fallen Angel, Christopher Daniels, like going out there, it, it just murdering it. And also you had these established stars that would work with them. I mean, Christian Cage with Sting was a really good pairing. You know, you had yeah. some good stuff. You had, uh, you had, you had Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle's the, debut the, again, and the headbutt, the headbutt uh, to Samoa Joe. You, uh, the Millionaires Club, was it the Millionaires Club or was uh, the, yeah, was the main event yeah. mafia? Main no, event mafia. Main event mafia. That was a good thing. Booker T showing up. Another good, you know, you know, great. Yeah, main event mafia right was there. staying Booker T, Steiner, Kevin Nash, Kevin Nash, and Angle? Angle and, that, was in it. and then you had Ric Flair kind of giving Styles uh, beer money. Beer money and Kazarian, the rub with fortune. Yeah. yeah. See, and this is the Jay thing. Lethal people- getting the rub, doing the Ric Flair impression. Woo. So the thing that gets me is it's like you can try and compare them, but I mean, it, it's it's not it's not the same. It's it's really not the same. And I think a lot of that has to come comes down to one thing and it's heart. Okay? Oh, absolutely. There, there is a lot of passion in in AEW, like when I watch their product, I think of, okay, I think of a match that we didn't talk about, but I'm going to bring him up. I think of Malachi Black. Bro, that dude exudes passion in yep. his character, in the presentation of his character and the way that it is done. It is becoming bigger and bigger, and it's still focusing on this one thing. It's not the presentation completely. The presentation focuses you on the guy. And oh, that absolutely. guy, that guy, when he walks down to that ring and removes that gear, yep. is, I believe, whatever he is selling. And there is something to that that AEW has captured that I don't think really was there for and, long periods of time in some of those other companies. No. And what's, and what's all, and something else that they've captured is I know a lot of people are shitting on it is the, is the Cody road aspect is Cody road. Cody Rhodes is getting booed out of buildings. Okay. But he cut this promo going, yeah, I could do the easy thing and turn heel, but I'm not going to because I have this brand, I have this thing and everything. It's 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 very I'm I think that Cody Rhodes is going to turn at some point, but it's going to be a very slow, very slow burn to it. And I think the deciding factors, the deciding factor is going to be him turning on Aaron Anderson. See, because ooh, I'll let you go. I'll let you go. I, I like I think it's going to be him turning on Ander, on Arn, but I also like to think that it's going to be something different because 
that's what everybody expects. See, yeah, that's like, yeah, because if you really, th- if you really look at it, is Arn Anderson at one point, and and I'm gonna say this is the the little the little bit of tease that they had with Arn and Tully. Like guys, you gotta let you gotta like if you're gonna do something like that. You gotta, you gotta let it, you gotta let it burn a little bit more than they did. But if you really look at it, Arn Anderson, the enforcer, he was second in command of the four horsemen. Okay. He was always that number two guy. He knows how to be, he knows how to, how to be a dick. He knows how to, how to, how to be that thing. A lot of people are going, oh, if Cody's going to turn heel, he's got to attack Arn. Not necessarily. I think it's going to be a very slow burn. And what I think's going to happen is right now, and I know a lot of people have said, AEW has too many factions, okay? You have Dark Order. You have the Elite. The the thing is, and you have you have like the pinnacle, you have the inner circle, okay. I, the inner circle to me, I don't think AEW has enough factions. I I think they're good because all their factions have different operating points, okay. Jer- Jericho's pretty much Jericho has this pop culture career. He's a rock star. He's a podcaster and everything. He knows his time in the business is coming up. Okay. So he created a group. He's got, he brought in Jake Hager to try to get, to give Hager a chance to disrobe that Jack Swagger thing, which Jake Hager has done. Yes. He successfully, he's become Jake Hager. He's become Jake Hager. Okay. He's got the young guy in Sammy Guevara. He's giving him the rub, rub in that as like his the next in line to, to take my spot. Yep. And then he's helped Santana Ortiz establish as a tag team. With Pinnacle, you have MJF, Wardlow, FTR, Sean Spears. They're all their different. Granted, yes, it was a group of guys brought together by the inner circle. They they have a they they have outside of that they haven't really been together together. Okay? No, they're, they're, yeah, they're they're they okay. So you can't really consider them a faction because outside of like one storyline, they've all done their own separate thing. They just they fly under the umbrella that we're the pinnacle. Yes, exactly. That's kind of it. It's like we do our we do our shit separate, but we're all pinnacle. Yeah, dark order is dark order. That's that's fine. Great, awesome group of guys come together. Oh, great. The elite was already built. The elite is the elite's essentially a subsidiary of the Bullet Club from New Japan. It's Omega Young Bucks done. They they added you added Adam Page at one point, Cody Rhodes, whatever, whatever. Okay. What I think's going, what I think's going to happen, and and like I said, people are oh, if Cody, if Cody turns heel, he got to attack Arn. No, he technically doesn't. What if Cody Rhodes at some point decides, okay, we're going to do this heel thing in a very slow burn, and there were a lot of people back in the 80s, 70s, 80s. What would have happened if Dusty Rhodes ever actually joined the Four Horsemen? If Dusty Rhodes actually would have turned heel? Uh, see, yeah. Now, that therein lies a, a problem, is that Dusty was heel, and then when he became a good guy, he stayed a good guy because yep. he was so fucking good at being a good guy. Exactly. It, it's like, I like Ric Flair as a heel. Yep. Ric Flair is a good guy. It's kind of like, man, it do, it doesn't really fit. Yeah. I 
I honestly see Cody Rhodes becoming a heel in a very slow burn and Arn Anderson kind of being that kind of falling into what JJ Dillon was. I can see that. I genuinely can see that. And Cody, Cody, and with the forbidden door and everything being open, Cody building his own faction in the light of in the light of the four horsemen or or knock on wood Cody Cody works behind the scenes and goes hey Tully you and Arn used to run together you know what I understand the pinnacle I understand FTR has this like agreement with the pinnacle or whatever. they're 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 pinnacle but I'm an I'm I'm an EVP. I can make them bigger. He he gra- he grabs FTR, and then you you and then, like I said, Forbidden Door. Cody Cody's looking at talent outside, and he ends up bringing in somebody to bringing in somebody young. You know, I I, I feel what you're saying. I really do. And like well, I said, I'm going, I'm shooting off the cuff, but you're shooting off the cuff. I feel what you're saying. And I know, I feel the reason you're saying it, but for me, and this is, this is, this is my little tinfoil underneath my beanie cap is a hat of tinfoil. Cause I'm always thinking of the conspiracy behind it. What if he sat there through John Cena master classes in WWE for like the last decade? Okay, what it, like I'm uh, just feel me out. Mm-hmm. John Cena was the face, but night after night after night after night, John Cena got booed. Yeah, but John Cena would cover that up by saying, "Look, it is so easy to be the bad guy; it's harder to do what's right." And what if Cody Rhodes in this in 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 this company? is going to be that John Cena that's like, yeah, I absolutely know it would be easy to be an asshole, but it's a lot harder to do the right thing. And if I get booed out of the building every night, that's fine. Like he, like he said with that promo. That's fine. But what if he really fucking sticks to it? Yeah. And just says, you know what? We, we are going to do this. And even if I get booed out, like Malachi Black should have come in as like, the most evil dude on planet earth. And instead everyone's like, yes, kill him, kill Homelander. You know, it's like one of those deals where you have to think of it. I would love to see dusty four horsemen as you're kind of putting it. I really would. But there's a part of me that's like, how long can he stay a good guy? Yeah. Like, can he make this plan work? And if it works, how well is it going to work? Because, you know, he's not a bad wrestler. No, he's not. He's an amazing talent. And he's and what, what's funny. What's funny is I love the people. I love the people's reasoning between him. Like so many people are like his reasoning for turning heel is because of that. God awful neck tattoo. Oh, my God. He, he suddenly changes his name to Kyle Rhodes and starts punching hole in drywall. Um, <laughs> Man, just like people <laughs> so, are like, you can't be a good guy with that t- with that neck tattoo. Ne- Don't you know that guys with neck tattoos have gonorrhea because they're dirty sailors? What are you doing? But it's the it's the thing of it's the thing of you know what Cody Rhodes and Cody Rhodes has been a heel before. Like yeah, it's, he, yeah, he he was under the tutelage of heel of Randy Orton school of healism um, with, with that. And then of course he, you had dashing Cody Rhodes and I, uh, yeah, I did like, I like the, the broken face Cody Rhodes. Was yeah. Like, I thought, the, yeah. Yeah. With the, with the mat like that. And then of course his, his, his time as Stardust like was just hilarious and everything. And it, it it's just the thing of, like you said, I I completely agree with you. He's he spent enough time in WWE and watching John Cena, 
And could Cody Rhodes try to pull that off and be like, yeah, you guys want me to turn. That can be, that would be the easy route, but no, I'm doing this. Yeah. And you don't have to give the audience what they want to tell good storytelling. No. You know what I mean? Like, I, I honestly think like denying them that because case in point, you know, we can look at the other side. Like how long did we want Roman Reigns to turn heel? Oh my yeah. God. Oh my God. Or, or when he the won the Royal or, Rumble or, or the, the, the few minutes that the wrestling world, like lost their proverbial shit during the John Cena fiend house of horrors match. And John Cena had the NWO shirt on. Oh my God. Yeah. People lost their shit when John C- when they had NWO John Cena, it's like, Oh, is John going to come back a heel? It's like, Nope. Nope. John Cena came back doing his thing. He just happened to have made a dope movie while he was gone and yeah. probably a dope TV show. Like that's what people need to get in their heads is it's like, just cause you want it doesn't mean you need it. Yeah, like people exactly. want Cody Rhodes, but at the same token, look at all the great heels that they've got in that company. I mean, I mentioned Malachi black because dude, he's 1000% should be a heel. He should be like the, oh, the, the top heel. Hey, Malachi Black, uh, Andra, uh, Andrade, uh, Miro. You have Miro. You like you have t- MJF. Like you have you have like your top heels. Like Cody doesn't need to be a heel, and it like it's gonna be. That would be the easy, and like Cody said, that promo, he's like, that would be the easy route, but I'm not going to do it. I'm yeah. not going to do it. And it's going to be, it. I I love that, is like, how long is it, how long can he hold out? Like, that type deal. When did they start booing him? Like, I know, because this is Probably funny. Probably within the last six months. Because I can tell you, I know the exact moment John Cena started getting booed. I know the exact fucking moment it happened. Uh, do you remember the Monday Night Raw during the feud, Kurt Angle versus John Cena? Yep. And it was shortly after the divorce was made, you know, information like that Kurt Angle's wife, you know, was thinking of like divorce. And he comes out there and just cuts this scathing promo about the fans screaming you suck and he goes off on the mic i wish i could find this i probably can you know if i searched in the raw stuff where he's basically like you people keep screaming you suck but it's like i'm away from my family my wife's gonna divorce me do i still suck i come out here every single night and give you everything i've got do i still suck and like i think wrestling fans at that moment were like you know he's he's right he doesn't suck like that guy sucks. Fuck him. Yeah. It's like, that's when the hate became for John Cena. I don't think there was really that for Cody. I think it was like, it's been slow burning. It, yeah. It's, it's been a very slow burn over the last like six months or so. Um, and everything it, it's, it's interesting because like we said, it was, it was a slow burn with Roman Reigns and because because what you got to look at is Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns left at some point in 2020. Right before WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah. Right before mania um, because of the COVID and because of his leukemia situation. Uh And then he came back and that that's when he showed up when he showed up for the Strowman fiend such fiend match and just came in and was like, yo, I'm wrecking the shit winning the title. And he's had the title since. And then he's like, yo, I was gone. Now I'm back. Now you guys hate me because I did what I said I was going to do. I came in and smashed. All right, fine. Acknowledge me because I'm the guy. Yeah. And before we continue on with more WWE talk and Survivor Series look ahead, we are going to take a quick break here on the TTRP. We'll be back after these messages. we 
right, welcome back. We are about to get into WWE Survivor Series talk. Um, of course, Roman Reigns came back and he's done the whole acknowledge me head of the table and that. And now even more because of this wet this past week on SmackDown of him facing Xavier Woods, lost by disqualification, so technically he had to bend the knee. Um, but the Usos being the Usos beat up Xavier Woods and crowned him with the, with with the crown. It's interesting because obviously Roman Reigns is Roman Reigns is the biggest heel in the company, plain and simple. Yeah, um, he's he's going to be facing Big E at Survivor Series, which okay, WWE the last couple of years with the brand splits they've. Champion versus champion, whatever. WWE yep. versus Universal, Wit, Raw, SmackDown, Intercontinental, US, US tag titles, whatever. Okay. Everybody knew the matches were going to happen. WWE, it honestly, in years past, Survivor Series has kind of always been that precursor. Like a big to, show. Yeah. Has always like a been the big show. It's been that precursor to head to Royal Rumble and everything. This year doesn't feel that way uh-huh. because WWE went, hey, our Survivor Series matches, they announced them on, they announced them on freaking Twitter. And, and Instagram, yep. Twitter, Instagram, and the thing, and the thing that's funny is the teams make no sense in the sense of the storylines that they have going on Uh because and granny yes okay it survivor series has kind of always been a brand like brand since the rock since the brand split it's always been a brand supremacy type thing in recent years even nxt has gotten into it yeah but this year it's kind of like Okay, you announce these teams, but it makes no sense because starting off, they announced the Team Raw versus Team SmackDown, the men's side of it. Uh, representing Monday Night Raw will be Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, Kevin Owens, Rey Mysterio, and the almighty Bobby Lashley. Yep. On the SmackDown side uh, was McIntyre, Xavier Woods, Jeff Hardy, Sami Zayn and Happy Corbin, but if Sami Zayn has lost his spot, um, which, which is building up to him continuous with this conspiracy. Yes, yeah, yeah. So now yeah. it's going to be interesting to see who replaces Zayn. And then they announced the women, the women's uh, traditional five on five, which Raw's team was Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan, Carmella, Queen Zelina. SmackDown was Sasha, Shotzi Blackheart, Shayna Baszler, Natalia, and newcomer Aaliyah, but Aaliyah got cut um, off, and so she's going to be replaced. It it was kind of like, okay, you announced these on social media, but none of these teams make sense in the sense of all right, so I can say that the women's team on SmackDown is actually got a good story going on right now because it's kind of like, who's the alpha female leading this stuff? And yeah. with Shotzi coming in and turning heel, yep. which, by the way, part of me thinks is just another NXT star that's about to get the shaft, except for the fact that I do not think that Shotzi is going to let that happen No, because she's done a character reinvention, which is basically her still only with less clothing. Yep. Somehow straightening her hair and wearing spikes and all that other stuff, which is just a variation of the character she was portraying as tank girl in NXT is still in her. Yep. So she's going to keep that. I think it's going to be good. Um, as far as the men's teams go, it's almost like what they did is I'm going to call it right now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to call this one. Um, with the the king of the drip drip, Seth Rollins. Yeah. First off, 
he's won me over with this. Forget the Messiah thing. Oh, Him yeah. coming out looking like Mary Poppins made my heart hurt. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's going to continue on because I think he's going to end up going after Roman Reigns. Somehow, oh. some way. Yeah. I think he. it's not going to be McIntyre. I think it's going to be Seth Rollins is somehow going to go at Roman Reigns. I, but I, I still, I'm still holding out. I'm still, I'm still holding out that he's get, Rollins is going to have the slow burn with Big E. Yes. Uh, Cause I have the slow burn, slow burn with Big E and Kevin Owens and that. Yeah, um, I, I think the other thing is, is that everyone's already talking about Kevin Owens leaving at the end of December. Yep. Dude. Ain't ain't nothing, ain't nothing been said yet. Not you know, like all we have is a date. Chill the fuck out. Yeah, I think there's uh, another story that's developing, and we can't go a podcast without mentioning Finn Balor or uh, the Fiend, and that's happened twice. Oh, and Sting. So all three of our bingos have been hit. Yeah, and CM Punk. So all four, all, all four, four of the the trifecta, the four pillars yeah, of our the, podcast. The four pillars of the podcast have been have been discussed. Oh Jesus Christ! So here we go. Uh, let's not forget that. WrestleMania is coming up. Yep. And let's not forget that Finn Balor was fucked out of his title shot at SummerSlam by one John Cena and that John Cena will be coming back pretty soon. He's just, you know, taking care of some business beforehand. What if this leads to Finn Balor starting to go heel? Because the way that they made the social media look is that you kind of have like Drew and Seth, yep. Jeff and Balor. Yeah. What what if what if this leads to Jeff Hardy pushing this kid up so that he's ready to face a John Cena at a WrestleMania? Very, what, if, very what, what if this is Finn Balor's uh, final like cuz let's be honest when John Cena was wrecking it in WWE, Finn Balor was over in New Japan yep. being the face over there. So the two faces of time periods for their respective companies would finally be going at it. And I think this gives us the opportunity for uh, Finn Balor to finally get the acknowledgement that he's as good as he is, but also let's put the fiend, the de- like, let's put the demon King versus John Cena together in the most superhero place of all time. And let's see what happens when, you know, Peacemaker goes against the Demon King because, dude, I want that action figure two pack from Mattel. <laughs> you know, John Cena coming out and like Peacemaker gear at Mania would be fantastic. I would piss my pants if he wore the Peacemaker gear to WrestleMania to fight the Demon King. Take my money. I'm done. I quit the sport completely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The, and what's funny is like, you you have that wild card Bobby Lashley. Lashley still wants to be the champion or everything. Uh, I like as much as I love Big E. Um, I I don't expect his run to last to Mania. I I I think if it does, if it does, I feel like he's going to end up in like a triple threat match. Okay, I see that. I see. I feel I see like if if Biggie's run lasts to Mania, I feel like he's going to end up in a triple threat match. Rollins, Rollins is, I believe Rollins, Rollins is going to win the Rumble this year, and he's going to go after Reigns because they they've they've teased that and teased it. They haven't and they haven't closed that chapter yet. No, and if Reigns, the the thing that gets me is. Everyone is so reliant on this what if superhero face off between the great one and Roman Reigns. Yep. Like everyone wants it. I think that that's honestly going to have to be something that is right place, right time. And I don't know if this is the right time. I don't know if Mania this year is the right time because, I mean, truth be told, and I'm not bashing it i mean fuck i'm wearing his outfit for christ's sakes while i'm recording this podcast thank you under armor but uh dude dude, the rock's doing all sorts of other shit and roman reigns still hasn't beaten enough people okay like he has not beat drew mac he did beat drew mcintyre i think 
like at Mania years ago, but like as the king of the table, the head of the table, um, he, he hasn't faced McIntyre yet, has he? I don't. I need. I need you to Google so. that one. I because I don't want to give bad information. Because if those two face off at like the Royal Rumble, leading up to Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns at Mania. Okay, those, so let's see. Rain I don't think they faced off. Okay, Tribal Chief, twenty twenty till now. Uh, re- return to SummerSlam. Um, attacking the attacking the Universal Champion Fiend and Strowman. Okay, so that's two. At, yep. After that, after yep. that, then the following SmackDown, he aligned himself with Heyman. Okay. Turning heel, payback. He defeated Fiend and Strowman for the title. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, Clash Champions re- retained the title against Jey Uso. Okay. Yeah, he beat up. He beat them up and made them. Bend yeah, the and then. Uh, granted, help granted Jay a rematch at the Hell in the Cell. Uh-huh. Um, second defense was Strowman, technically by submission. Mm, right. Then, uh, let's see, Survivor Series defeated Matt, uh, defeated McIntyre in a champion versus champion match. Okay, so there we go. Drew McIntyre isn't even on the list of people to survive yet. Like, yeah. he, uh, like, then he, there you go, he had the feud with Kevin Owens. Okay, yep, so um, KO's been the defeat. name. Defend it, uh, defend the title against Owens at TLC. Then a last man standing match at the Rumble. Then Daniel Bryan, an elimination chamber in Fast Lane. Okay. Then uh, Edge, which was the triple threat at Mania. Uh-huh. Um, then he defeated Bri- uh, Bryan in the championship first career on yep. SmackDown. Uh, Cesaro at Backlash. Okay, there we go. Not calling it WrestleMania Backlash. It's Backlash. Backlash. Um, then a feud with Rey Mysterio. Yep. Okay. For Hell in the Cell. Mm-hmm. Then um, he was had the match with Edge at Money in the Bank. Okay. With the assistant, won the match with the assistance of Rollins. Then a uh, SummerSlam match with John Cena. It's John Cena. Um, and then immediately after that was re- was the return of Lesnar, began the feud Bro- with Balor. Money. Yep. And oh, yep. There you go, Balor. Um, and- Balor. Um, let's see. Then defeated, uh, defeated Balor at Extreme Rules. Yep. And then Crown Jewel defeated, defeated um, Lesnar, and then it was announced at. On November eighth, that he would do the champion versus champion match with Biggie. All right, so everyone so far that you named, like he's already beaten them. He's not faced off against Seth Rollins, which would be a natural. No, nope. also I think WWE needs to stop being so reliant on these like super dream matches uh, in order to to fulfill fans' wants. You have what they want right in front of you. You just need to give it to them. Like let's. But now that you've said that, but we never got Lashley versus Lesnar. Nope. When, when is now? Now is the perfect time to do that. Bringing Lesnar in for however much you want. Continue him letting him be this woodland Viking dude like that. Fuck, yeah. I'll get behind that, Lesnar. Um, um, but you I, have. I think. I think for the remainder of the year. Um, I think the remainder of the year. Lesnar Lesnar's done with contracted matches. Mm-hmm. Goldberg still has one more. Biggie. Um, yeah, Goldberg still has. I think. Uh, I think Goldberg's contract still has him set for one more match. Okay. Which Biggie would be would be great. Um, at this point, I. At this point with them, okay, Survivor Series, you got champion versus champion. He'll Reigns will face Big E. I think what'll happen is I think they announced that they aren't doing a December pay-per-view. Nope. Nope. They're not doing a December because they're doing the January first one. They're doing one New Year 2022. Oh, okay. That's why, because they're building up to that show, which will build up to the Rumble, which will build up because there's no there's no pay-per-view before WrestleMania this year. They're literally doing January 1st, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania night one. So they're going to actually give you enough time to build because there's a lot of characters in there that that they 
that are starting to do what we're hoping as far as slow burn storytelling. And yeah. that's, that's RK bro. Very, yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, which RK bro is going to end up facing you. So is it survivor series? Cause tag champs. Yep. Um, you're going to see Nakamura versus Damian priest because I see versus us title. That's going to be fun. Becky That's going to be fun. Becky Lynch versus Charlotte because of the women's division. Mm-hmm. Um, but usually, be, this is the funny part. Don't they always throw a championship change swerve before Survivor Series? They have done it. They have. They consecutively. They have. In, in the past. Like, so to me, I, they, I mean, what? that would be, that'd be dope. Because that gave us Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar. That gave us Jen, that gave us AJ Styles versus Brock Lesnar because yep. they did it right beforehand because it it was set for what Jinder Mahal to face Brock Lesnar. Yeah, and then and they then, the SmackDown. I think the SmackDown right before Survivor Series, like the Friday before, is St- Styles ended up winning the, the title from Mahal. Yeah. And then the cool part about that was, is it gave us a different match style from Brock Lesnar because he let those little guys give him those moves because he, plus even nobody, he, plus honestly, everybody, they, they're like, Ginger Mahal is not a viable opponent for Brock Lesnar. I, I would have liked to have seen it. If you want I, the truth, I, I would have liked yeah. to have seen it. But AJ Styles, like, my favorite part of that match was AJ had him in the uh, the calf crusher and Brock just grabbed him and was like, slam, 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 slam. Like it was like watching Bam Bam from the Flintstones beat the yeah. um, shit out of a dinosaur. It was hilarious. It, it's like Survivor Series is brand supremacy. WWE is not really seen too keen on making it like super important, but with the way their pay-per-views are set up, I think you might see some you might see some slow burn stuff up to, leading up to that January first pay per view. How do you feel about WWE only doing nine pay per views next year? I think it's good. I I'm think cutting down on it. I yeah, they need I, to. I like this is my thing is if WWE went to say six. Six, yeah. Yeah. six, 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 six minimum, eight max. Um, I, I feel get, that you get rid of hell in the cell and make it the match like they did it in in Saudi. Yeah, get rid, get rid of hell in the cell. Make hell, make hell in the cell what it used to be. That definitive feud ender. Feud ender. Money in the bank, get rid of money in the bank, make money in the bank your main get money in the bank back to what it was at Mania originally. Yep. Don't make it it don't make it its own pay-per-view. Yep. And instead of and instead of two matches, one match. Plain just I, and alternate years. Alt- and alter- or yeah. if you're gonna continue this two night thing, have yeah. the have like, alternate them back and forth. I th- I like the idea of the two nighter. Just gonna say, yeah, the oh, yeah, which is perfectly fine. You night one, you have the men; night two, you have the women, and the next year you flip them, mm-hmm. um, because you have a stacked enough women's division. Oh my god, yeah. Um, so you you go back to your big four, Survivor Series, and I understand Survivor Series is kind of the brand supremacy thing. No, but it builds stories. But and it builds stories, so. Survivor Series, Rumble, SummerSlam, Mania, your big four. Backlash after Mania. Backlash after Mania. And then, so that's five. I need to pause your thought for two seconds. Yeah. Yo, the SmackDown team has some a spot to fill, right? Yeah. What's John Cena doing for Survivor Series? <laughs> True. That'd be interesting. Just saying. Yeah. Um. I. And then you. There would be one more, which I feel would probably backlash, and then 
they always did like a, a, a vengeance pay per view. Like, why can't we have vengeance again? Yeah, that got um, like bring back an oldie. Like bring like legit, or make Saturday night main event a one time a year pay per view on Saturday night. Why not do that? Vengeance. That would be dope. Vengeance was held December, so Vengeance was always at was between Survivor Series and Royal Rumble. There we go. I could, I could, I could, I could live with that because it yeah. set, sets up sets up for the Rumble. Yeah, but I, I mean, I love the Saturday Night Main Event thing, or or you do a clash, a Clash of the Champions type style thing on a st- style thing. I mean, you have enough pay per views where like you could go back and use a goodie. Like, do, you know, they did it with In Your House and Halloween yep. Havoc in NXT. You yeah. go back in like the Rolodex and do like a bash at the beach. <sighs> I mean, I know that they like to reserve some of that WW, you know, the WCW stuff for like the kids down in yeah Orlando. the nxt they like using the the the, the wcw yeah because it's NXT. like those kids those kids are like oh my god they had some great matches and you're just sitting back being like yes yes they did we remember yeah. them um but like you look at it and it's like eh, i like the reduced pay-per-view because oh, yeah. it makes the it makes the matches have to matter and i'm i'm 100 with you you don't need an elimination chamber pay-per-view you just need an elimination chamber match and it also like the less you see of it the more because if it's on your schedule every year where it's like oh, all right they're gonna have some some stuff here oh hell in a cell yeah okay cool yeah. like like, it. It, like truth truth be told <laughs> all right you have you have the royal rumble yep january February, no pay per view. March, early April, mania. Um, late April, early May, backlash. Cool. Junior, junior off, June, junior off. Um, or if you really want, you you do a because they do the Saudi Arabia shows. Yep. Okay. You set the Saudi Arabia shows for like June, July. And do what you did with the last one, King of the Ring, King of the Ring tournament into Crown Jewel. That was a cool concept. I'm not going to take anything away from that. No, I, I honestly, honestly, like the King of the Ring finals being a Crown Jewel makes sense. It, it it fits, and it was a cool idea. So you do Crown Jewel, like say say late June, early July, SummerSlam in August. September, September, you're off. November is Survivor Series, which, if you really want, November can be, be the brand, the brand supremacy pay per view. Yep. Vengeance, Vengeance is December, where the 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 Vengeance main event is the Elimination Chamber match, because this way, because this way, your champion has been a champion for however long. Now he fa- now. The concept of the elimination chamber is the champion faces the last five competitors. He, competitors he's faced for the title. Oh, dude the the scene of someone getting their ass whipped by all like all right that'd be cool that'd be an awesome visual that'd be like when Triple H would face everyone like Stone Cold the Rock and they would just punch 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 punch. <laughs> yeah, God. so it. Like imagine, like imagine. So, knock on wood. Imagine like Roman Reigns having to go to vengeance to defend the title, and he's got to defend the title against Biggie, McIntyre, Lesnar, uh, Cesaro, and Mysterio, or ba- or or instead of Biggie Balor. So you have like. McIntyre, Balor, Lesnar, Cesaro, and Reigns, and and Reigns in there, and then you add like, and then one uh, Jay Uso, because the oh, you gotta have backup. Oh my god, that'd be a that'd be a hilarious match. I'm sorry, I would want to see Brock Lesnar pick up the Uso and beat him, beat Roman Reigns with him. That would be the funniest shit, and you know you'd see it. Because Brock smash and he would just be beating on reins with his own cousin. Meanwhile, you'd have like all the other dudes just sitting back being like, 
we're just going to let this play out for a few minutes. All right. We're getting psh, shit. Sit back, watch <laughs> or, this. Or, 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 or you have, you do the, you, you got the elimination chamber match. First two entrants is first two entrants is Lesnar and, and Jay Uso Ray raises in the raises in the box, Cesaro, Fowler, and McIntyre in the box. And then the next guy out is Reigns and Brock just <laughs> Brock and those guys just want. sit there in the glass being like, good job, buddy. You're doing great. Yep. While he's getting tossed pillar to post. And Brock's oh. just out there suplex city the both both of them. Oh, that'd be a fun see that book it. Book that shit. Watch make it watch better. watch what happens. WWE brings back vengeance. They're like elimination chamber match. We have a the champion faces his last five challengers. They haven't given me they haven't given me my fiend belt yet either. They've stolen True. off of our shit. They could at least take my belt. Yeah. Or give me one. I know, right? Um, but but on on another side, uh, WWE is in a little hot water, hot water. Um, considering considering uh recent recent news reports. So, uh, as we get to wrap up, as we're heading to wrap up the show here, uh, it was reported that there are be- behind the scene issues with WWE's Up Up Down Down gaming channel on YouTube. Of course. The channel is hosted by Xavier Woods. Um, you've seen many WWE talents on the show: Cesaro, Tyler Breeze, celebrities as well. Celebrities. Uh, they have like little factions: left, right, left, right, and and BRE and everything. Different people that with WWE people. Uh, Tyler Breeze was on it, as well as Mia Yim, who recently got. Released is the up up down down champion. So uh Xavier Woods did state that on Twitter, uh he stated on Twitter earlier this year that WWE has always owned the channel. Uh, even though there's been reports that saying he uh Woods sold the channel to WWE back in 2015. Woods says that's not the case. He, they've always owned the channel. Um the report says there hasn't been much content posted to the channel in recent months, and word is that many of the content creators have stopped making content for the channel in solidarity f- with founder Xavier Woods. Uh, this according to Fightful Select. Word is the content creators feel like Woods is getting taken advantage of by a bad deal with the Up Up Down Down channel. Uh, noted that the creators do not plan on posting new content until Woods gets a better deal from the company. Uh, regarding the current conflict, uh, it was noted that people who appear on the Up Up Down Down channel are paid. Sources working with WWE Digital uh, reportedly agreed that Woods should have been paid more for growing the channel and encouraging new faces to be involved. As it stands, uh, the channel was launched in March of 2015. And currently has 2.27 million subscribers with over 410 uh, billion views. With a B. Yeah. So. Billions. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, they they have a they they have a lot of they have a lot of views. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 400, uh, 411, 847, 153 video views. So yeah, they're it's like over four hundred million, basically. Do you think um, Vince McMahon hates video games? <laughs> so, uh, if you uh, people have gone to the channel, uh, I think they, I think the last, I think the last channel, the last video that was. Um, let me see. The last video that was uploaded, I think, was eleven. Yeah, it was eleven days ago with uh, Happy Corbin's top five or top five favorite video games. Um, before that, it was uh, Mustafa Ali having an opinion, and then uh, before that, it was Tekken Night Three with Samoa Joe versus Jimmy Uso versus Kofi versus Woods versus R. Uh, Shelton Benjamin for Tekken 7. 
Um, you, just, you just killed me when you said Mustafa Ali has an opinion and you just moved on to the next thing. Like I'm sitting over here being like, does Padgy know he's being uh, unintentionally hilarious by just being like, yeah, Mustafa Ali has an opinion. And next. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so um, it is. So what it is, is apparently because I know Tyler Breeze is still Tyler Breeze has still appeared on the channel. Um, since being released, as well as Justin and Duke. Um, I believe that they have deals with WWE for Up, Up, Down, Down specifically. Um, probably the same thing is going to be, probably the same thing for Mia Yim, who's currently the Up, Up, Down, Down champion and everything. So they're going to collect a paycheck from WWE. They're just not going to be wrestling. It's, yes. They're sitting they're, home playing video games. Yeah. They're basically the ba- their contracts basically through WWE digital instead of. So like part of the WWE, um, it's just a lot of the content creators, they want to hold out because they feel like Woods has been taken advantage of and he's not getting proper financial monetary compensation monetary compensation for all the work he's done and the thing is is i agree with it i agree with him because if you really look at it woods had granted what woods apollo creed apollo creed um is part of the wwe that's where he's made his name and everything yep but he and that's where he's gotten a lot of stuff He's had a lot of opportunities to do things, but even before then, he was doing a lot of stuff and building connections within the gaming world as well. It's just now he's on a bigger platform, and unfortunately, WWE's faced a lot of heat with the whole third-party situation and everything with the with the Twitch channels and of course, one of them being the most recent with Adam Cole, they, Adam, they're like, Hey, we want to bring you up to the main roster, but we want to make you a manager. And also you have to quit your chit. You have to shut down your Twitch channel. Um, AJ, we've already seen what that third party, third party nonsense has led to AJ Styles has shut down his channel. Uh, It led to, it led to Paige rebranding hers. It led to uh, Zelina Vega rebranding her channel, and and she. I don't even think she's. I don't. I think she's kind of canceled her channel out due to the fact that a lot of her content um, in, involved her husband, Al, uh, Malachi Black. So it, it's the thing. So I think. Uh, I know Selena Vega is running her has a TikTok, but it's under the name of Thea Trinidad, her real name. So I'm sure WWE knows she's got some kind of deal with that or whatever. But it's the thing of you have Xavier Woods, who is a massive name within the gaming community. Uh, he's going to be a host contributor for the returning G4 network. Um, Woods has built a lot of building. They he he helped facilitate the quote unquote dream match between the New Day and the Elite at uh one of I think E three a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, E three. Yep. Yeah, E three. And it was the did, uh, Street, Street Fighter, Fighter Showdown. Yep. Yeah, the Street Fighter Showdown. So it's the thing of you have. And I'm not going to say this, not all video game, not all video game people are wrestling fans. Nope. There's a good amount of gamers that are wrestling fans because you see them playing 2K, you see them playing WWE 2K, you see them play Fire Pro Wrestling, uh, uh, you used to have gamers playing the old, like doing streams of the older games, No Mercy and WrestleMania and WCW and NWO Revenge, um, which I'm partially have tempted to do. Find an N64 for that reason. They're um, out there. They are. Oh, I know. I know. Um, and literally just play, <laughs> play WCW, NWO Revenge um, or No Mercy for that. 
Uh, it's the thing of WWE is always looking to try to create new audience. And that's what Xavier Woods has done. Like he's built this channel over the last six years. And whether Woods owned it and sold it, whether WWE owned it from the start, here nor there. It's you have one of your talents doing so much extra work on their days off or their days off or their days that they are working because there's been a lot of there's been a lot of stuff where they're in the locker room and Woods has brought his setup or whatever. He's got his like little mobile setup and they've done the challenges or whatever, especially with celebrities and whatnot. Um, Sasha Banks' husband, Mikaze, uh, has been on there a ton. Um, so was Ronda, right? Like Ronda's been on there. Yeah, Ronda. Right. Yep. Ron has been on there. Uh, Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman's been on there. Like the, he's done a lot of stuff with a lot of WWE talent. Episode. Wow. I I gotta watch that episode. Yeah, there um I will find it and I will send it to you. Yes. Um yeah, but they like he did it, he did like an interview. It was like a little it was an interview with Heyman and Lesnar. Um that's hilarious. Was, did Lesnar play any games? Um, I don't think he plays any games. I think it was just like an interview discussing gaming. Oh, uh, okay, cool. I know Ron, I know he did. I know he's done. I know um, like he's played games with Ronda Rousey. He's played games with Baszler, Jessamine Duke. Um, I wonder how he would use a controller. Like his his hands are these massive that like yeah. They have to build a custom Andre the Giant size controller for someone like that. They'd have probably to. it's possible probably. <sighs> Probably. Um, but yeah, he, like he's he's let he's done a lot. Um yeah. Give the man his money, like give the man what yeah. he's due. You know what I mean? Like they in my opinion, they should treat it like uh merchandise, right? Like yeah. a, a, a performer gets a certain cut of their merchandise, their merch sales are high, they get a big ass check. Yo, know, we've heard about these checks, these quarterly checks. It's like every time Xavier Words gets a view. Boom, more money. Do you yeah. realize he would be one of the highest paid dudes on the roster if that was the case? If every single time someone viewed one of his videos, he got like a, a buck fifty. Those things rack up, man. Oh, they absolutely they absolutely do. And like the thing is, is like there's so much content that he's done. And granted, yeah, uh Adam Cole used to be a big proponent, big member of of the channel and of course him leaving the AW, he's left the channel and everything. Um, but it's the thing of there's so much different stuff that they have going on with the channel that I I'm sure. Yes. Everybody gets a percentage, but Woods is the Woods is the driving force. Like he's, he's, he's the face, like he's the face of the channel, right? He's the face of the channel. So I feel like him being the face and him doing all the work that he's done, that he's done on the channel, he he definitely deserves a decent payday for it. And yes, granted, he's part of the New Day and he's got the King of the Ring and and everything. It's just something that, W. come on, really? WWE like we spoke last week, had releases, but they're like, hey, the day, it was like the day of or the day after, like, hey, our quarter three, we made 200-something billion dollars or whatever. Yeah, it was like 270 million. Yeah, like, they they had a good chunk of change positive, positive, and I'm like, I'm like, yo, you, you, like, you could, you could, you could hand, uh, you can hand, like, 2% 2% of that over to Woods for all the work that he's done with this channel. Because yeah. the thing is, if you really look at it, WWE over the last five years, they've tried to build a social media network. Like a lot of the, a lot of the talents on Twitter, uh, they were on, like I, there was uh Vine. Vine was a big thing for them for a hot minute. 
Yep. As well as I think there was some some other video video service that they did. Yeah. For and, a I mean, when The Rock came in in 2011 and really pushed the Twitter thing, WWE then changed their their thing. Where like, if it was number one trending in the U.S. or the world, yep. it was up in the corner. Like they embraced that aspect of social media. They tried their own social media network for a while. It was whatever. But like, yeah, to me, it's kind of the way that their business model is going is, is they're relying on social media content and their performers are their best content providers. Like, let's be honest. Some of them put out some really funny shit, but I mean, they gotta be getting a kickback for it because they're, they're promoting as much, if not more than you are for them. Yeah, absolutely. And this, this, this is the thing is like they're they're promoting he's promoting the ch- he's promoting everything and everything like he's done he's done like videos for two like the WWE video games 2K over the last couple of years um he like he's done slur he's like done appearances at, at game at gaming conventions and stuff like that and then of course but the the thing that he did with when G four was announced to return and he had the, yeah, he, he had the, big, the main contributors like he had the big push to become a host for the returning G four network and he got such a such a response from that yeah and didn't he actually like do G four gear right after that was announced that he was going to be on it yeah. and it's like here's my yeah. G four gear check it it's fly and yeah. honestly. You couldn't have a better representative for that style of thing. And in my thing, if he's going to be a brand ambassador and a content creator and a producer and a star, man, you monetarily, you need to compensate because there is a lot that that guy does that is some of the best shit. Oh, you did find it. You sent me it. Yeah, he said it to me. Oh shit! I know what I'm watching after this podcast. Dan reacts to Brock. Le- Brock looks pissed. Brock looks so goddamn angry in this picture, and Paul Heyman looks like he wants. Yeah, to they die. were they were discussing 2K17, the okay. the, right. the expansion pack. So I can't. It's it's been a, it's like four years old, but I still. don't care because I want to hear Brock smash. Like, I'm sorry, that's hilarious. Talk, talk video games. I do. I think that that would be like Snoop Dogg hanging out with Martha Stewart the first time. Like, you might think nothing comes of that. And then you're like, oh, wow, they're really good together. Like, no shit. Yeah. Hilarious. So it's it's the thing of like, he's like, he's done. um, He's done so much. Uh, he's done so much stuff with talents and everything. Um, it's just, it's, it's crazy. Like, yeah. and, and like you've, he's done like there, there's the let, there's like the let's play section where he, he sits down and play. He's playing by himself or he's playing with someone else or whatever. And there he's had like AJ Styles. He's had Asuka. Cesaro, uh, McIntyre. Um, it's been like there was one I think with he, him, and Randy Orton sat down and played something. Uh, it's just like it's just giving giving people t- an outside avenue to be themselves outside of the WWE camera, and also still kind of being in character a little bit because I. Yeah. You know, I, I see that being a thing. Yeah. So it, it's just like, yo, all right, you have you have this like huge following on this channel and like all this work that he's done with the production and the recording and and using his own equipment. My oh, yeah. like he is using his own equipment to play these games and granted like a lot of a lot of stuff's like people are using their own equipment he's used it cesaro so on and so forth their own 
consoles, PCs, whatever they're running. But still, at the end of the day, the man's done the work. Yeah, pay, I mean, pay him as as Hannibal as Hannibal Burris says, money over everything. Bam. Cash rules everything around me. Cream, get the cheddar. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. So it it's just like, pay the man. Just And then so we can get back to seeing great content on Up, Up, Down, Down from all the people that are involved and, and that. But um, last, the, the last big thing uh, that wanted to speak is so with the with the forbidden door right. uh it was announced i think that this week on dynamite um i think this week on dynamite orange cassidy is teaming up with one of the members of chaos Ah, yeah. Um, I I, uh, I don't know. Um, let me see. Uh, yeah. So it was yeah. Uh, Orange Cassidy and mem uh member of chaos, which I believe. Uh, it's. It's been suggested that it's going to be Tomohiro Ishii. Okay. Um, with, who has the nickname of the Stone Pitbull will be Cassidy's par- partner versus the Butcher and the Blade. Which is going to be Wednesday night on D- Dynamite. All right. That sounds like a good one. I'm going to have to tune in. So, yo, this, this whole Forbidden Door thing Oh my God. It gave us one of the coolest moments in YouTube when they gave away Brian Danielson versus Minoru Suzuki. And, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that was the best match of the year, in my opinion. Yeah. Because there was not a lot of flash leading up to it because it was just quickly thrown out there. But those two dudes beat the living shit out of each other for 30 minutes and it was amazing yeah he absolutely did um what was cool what was cool about that is this man did a did a did a u.s tour essentially um and he recently he actually he actually discussed the how it happened um with Russell with Russell Talk, I believe. Um he uh discussed he'd been wrestling uh so he he did the appearance at all out, then dynamite, and then did a few independent promotions. Um he is not currently contracted to New Japan. So he's just now having fun. Yeah, he's just yeah, he uh, his the interview said, "Well, I had an offer from a promotion over there. Really wasn't sure whether I want should take it. There's the whole quarantine thing for two weeks, and when you come back, deal. And it would have meant missing the G1. Uh. But as he was mulling it over, uh, the offers were coming in. It kept snowballing, and it just got to a point where it came down to it. going to America was a bigger challenge and adventure to him personally." Than the G1 climax. Uh, that's why he chose to do the US tour. Um, that sounds like a cool shit. Like basically, he was like, I can stay and do the, the normal, or I can go on this adventure over here and see what the fuck it brings me. And it brought him a lot of eyeballs. Yeah. He said, uh, he stated that it's not a value judgment. He said before, right? I'm not contracted. I'm not a new Japan guy. I choose all my own past, take responsibility for all my own actions, and I live the way I want. There, he said, there might be some morons who want to analyze these choices I make for myself, but it's all about making my own road. It isn't about my interest in them. They want me. There's a lot of companies in the U.S. If they want me, the conditions are right. While I head there and tear apart anybody put in front of me. <laughs> that is so. That yeah, is it was. Uh, September 8th, he had the match with Moxley. Uh, yeah. 
that he teamed with Archer to battle Moxley and Kingston in the light mat light outs match on ramp for the Rampage Grand Slam. Yep. He faced Nick Gage at GCW. He faced he faced Danielson. Uh he popped up in Impact. So he he had a hell of a US tour. Yeah. And got a lot more eyes on he, who he wrestled in New York. He, is. he wrestled in New York City again. Like yep. that's the cool part is that like he wrestled at the garden and he wrestled it for this company in a huge match with th- you know three out of the four competitors in there like recently have had great new japan runs like moxley you and i discussed it how uh, moxley's run in with that united states championship was outstanding work like which it was now awesome. is currently held by kenta yeah so like dude it's he, it's been a really good couple years storyline wise for some of the stuff that has come out of like new Japan. And now that it's bleeding into the United States wrestling companies, it's like, keep it up. Which, um, what was it? Uh, yes. So, uh, of course we talked about it. Uh, Okada who called out buddy Matthews, for um for November the 13th which was yesterday right uh, uh Okada Okada won the match um the full results for the Battle in the Valley show which featured that match was uh Josh Alexander over Uni uh Unimura. Bateman and Mysterioso defeated Brody King and Chris Dickinson uh, Tom Lawyer, Lawler, J.R. Kratos, Danny Limelight, Royce Isaacs, and Jorel Nelson defeated Ro- Fred Rosser, David Finley, Rocky Romero, Alex Coughlin, and Alex Zane. Carl Fredericks and Clark Connors defeated Jeff Cobb and TJP. Osprey over Narita. Moose defeated Juice Robinson. Okada over Buddy Matthews. And then uh, Tomohiro Ishii defeated Jay White for the never open weight championship. So so if 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 the if the if the rumors are true and Ishii is going to be Orange Cassidy's partner Ishii could show up on a dynamite with the New Japan Neverweight Championship. I love this forbidden door shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like we we've said it, we've said it before. Like the past two years, the past two years has been crazy for professional wrestling. It's been good to be a fan again. Oh, absolutely. Not to overanalyze the shit, but actually be a fan of it. It God, it's a good time. Yeah. It's been a it's been it's been huge. It's been huge for wrestling fans, but that's going to do it for us. Uh on TTRP. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for watching uh, the episode. Uh, so from here on out, uh, schedule announcement, episodes will be debuting on Mondays. Monday, Monday, Monday. Monday. Uh, every Monday, the episode will drop. Um, I'm going to get in touch with our our uh, CEO, John John over at Gear Network. Uh, set up. Money, give us money. <laughs> set up a specific time um it is it is going to be mondays what i'm thinking is I'm thinking mondays at 3 p.m or oh, i was gonna say 605 eastern 605 eastern we can always go with that <laughs> yes we can always go with that every mondays at 605 oh my god my georgia fans they'll love yeah. that one so all right so you know what we'll just you know what? we'll go with that mondays at 605 so every monday 6.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Check out uh, where you can get all your fine-ass podcasts. Uh, iTunes Music, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Uh, anywhere you can get podcasts, we're on iHeartRadio. Uh, please like, follow, subscribe to the channel because every subscription is a like for the channel. Let us know what you think. Uh Please, if you want, you want to drop comments, questions, inquiries, uh, TBTR podcast on Twitter, uh, as well as Turnbuckle Talk, uh, TBRTR, 
tbtrpodcast at gmail.com. I got to double check that. Don't don't quote me on it. I know don't quote the, the man. The Twitter is at tbtrpodcast, so you can follow, find us there. Uh, so the episode will drop tomorrow night, 6.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That'll be when the shows drop every week from here on out. Uh, so until then, be safe, be kind, be healthy. For Dan Fury, I'm Pat G. This has been the TTRP. We are out. The Turnbuckle Talk Radio podcast is brought to you by Gear Network and ShopGear.com. We can be listened to via Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and everywhere else you can get your podcasts. The TTRP introduction was done by Trevor Dugan. The show is hosted by Patrick Ganczewski and Daniel Roberts. Post-production of the TTRP is done by Patrick Ganczewski and John Semino. If you'd like to follow us via social media, you can search Turnbuckle Talk Radio Podcast on Facebook. You can follow us at Twitter by using the name Turnbuckle underscore talk. Or if you have questions or concerns, you can reach us via email at Turnbuckle, T-L-K, radio at gmail.com. We'd like to thank you for listening to the Turnbuckle Talk Radio Podcast, downloading our episodes, following us on social media, and interacting with us. The preceding presentation has been brought to you by the Gear Network.